10,000 subscribers. It's an incredible milestone. And as the channel continues to reach a wider audience, I remain blown away by the positive support I continue to receive. The community that's grown around this channel has been incredible, and I feel blessed to be a part of it. My passion for researching and creating visual explorations of topics that fascinate me has never been higher. And with every year that passes, the experiences gained along with investments in my behind the scenes equipment have allowed for a marked increase in quality. For many channels, getting interested viewers to be aware of their content is almost impossible. In fact, I've had a few discussions recently regarding retro gaming video coverage appearing to be on the decline. Now, there's certainly some truth to that, but what's more accurate to state is that these videos are just not getting recommended, which ultimately results in people leaving the platform exasperated by never reaching the audience that would appreciate in the work that they do. Let's be honest. Some create videos because they want to be famous. Some have a desire to create for an audience and some create content that they themselves want to see. However, in all these cases, the hours invested feel meaningless if there is no one to share in the end experience. My personal YouTube feed is often filled with low effort videos trying to game the algorithm while hardly offering anything of substance worth discussion or that doesn't feel directly lifted from someone else. It's hard to find creators I'm interested in because YouTube's algorithm is moving more and more towards promoting major media with every passing month. My show is about pursuing personal passions and sharing them with people around the world in an effort to make connections. And you know what? It continues to be an amazing, worthwhile journey. One that would be without meaning if not for the community support behind it. So to get back what I can, I've decided to again celebrate passing a personal milestone by signal boosting other channels I love. These are channels under 2000 subscribers that I feel viewers of my channel will also enjoy. Channels that have a particular focus on retro and independent gaming content that I believe would have a wider audience if only the right exposure came their way. I'll leave links in the description box, so be sure to stop by and check them out. If you enjoy what you see, I request you do something I never ask of my own channel. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for them. Also, be sure to drop a comment. Community engagement is critical. One last thing before I get started, there's a ton of great small channels out there, so if you know of one or happen to have one, leave a comment below telling me a bit about it. I'll try to stop by and visit everyone who does and hope you, the fellow viewer, will take the time to look through them as well. With that, Let's get started. This is Retro Impressions 10-ish great gaming channels under 2000 subs. Tanner's Game Museum, video game essays, mini history lessons, and reviews. Current sub count, 174. This channel is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. 74 uploads with the majority being high quality short essays or mini documentaries. Almost three years on the platform and still he's never caught traction. It's crazy because you can see the effort and love invested into every piece of work he does. It honestly just doesn't make sense on so many metrics as to why his sub count remains so low. It's clear that Tanner has a passion for games and creating video content. There's not many people who would stick it out for so long with so little love being returned. This show is well scripted, researched, shot, and recorded. I recommend starting with the Nintendo 64 expansion pack video, and if you enjoy that, you'll most likely dig his large back catalog. Gamer's Garden, video game analysis and retrospectives, current sub count 438. I've known Seb for around four years. Oh, okay. Maybe not known, but known of. You see, we both started posting videos on YouTube around the same time, and back then, content like his was actually getting recommended to me. We both appear to have a fairly long history of publishing videos online before our current programs. For me, this goes all the way back to Meta Cafe. For him, it was another channel on YouTube. That's why there's a two next to his name, as this is his second go around. But I digress. Seb doesn't post with any regularity, but I promise it's a treat when he does. His Super Scalar Port series is amazing, as is his passion for Sega. If you enjoyed my virtual racing video, make sure you start with his Daytona USA Ports deep dive and go from there. Froben, game reviews with a particular focus on the obscure, covering both new and retro. Current sub count, 557. Froben is another channel that should have a lot more traction than it does. When I first became aware of his existence, I thought that it must be one of those channels. You know, 
the kind that pushes out video after video containing zero substance. You see, about a year ago, I put out a tweet asking for small channel recommendations, and I was directed here. Now, typically, I wouldn't give a channel with so many weekly review videos a shot, but I promised to check out everything recommended to me. I picked the game I was familiar with and sat back for what I was sure would be a minute of wasted time. The end result, I'm sure you've already guessed as I'm talking about him here. Video after video, Froben executes well thought out reviews showing he's actually played the games he's discussing and knows them well. I have no clue how he does it, but the passion is clear and you honestly need to subscribe. His work ethic blows my mind, and I really like Froben as a reviewer and creator. I highly recommend starting with his video, Sega Beat'em Ups Before Streets of Rage, which is part of his Froben Saloon series. If that doesn't sound interesting, then pick a game you're familiar with like I did and start from there. You'll know right away if he's for you. HDE's Totally Unoriginal Gaming Show. Game reviews and topical conversations, current sub count 740. HDE doesn't promise anything unique and doesn't really deliver anything I can point out as being a gimmick. That's okay, because you don't need to reinvent the wheel as long as the wheel you make is top quality. With HDE, it certainly is. For the most part, his videos are straightforward reviews. He plays a game and gives you his thoughts. And to be quite frank, I really enjoy listening to him talk. There is really nothing else to say. It's just good, solid, well-spoken reviews, and I imagine most folks watching my channel will appreciate his work. Snostalgia, examination of hidden and altered content in retail release retro games. Current sub count 741. Now, this sub count is 100% misleading as the channel was previously focused on film. I don't know Taylor or the story behind the change, but the reality is his renewed focus on video games has 186 total views as of writing the script. He has only five videos, which was my minimum to make the cut. With that said, you'll notice right away that Taylor's long history with YouTube shows in each well-paced video he's released. His channel currently has one show called Lost Bits, which looks at content that didn't make it into a game's final build, whether it's due to localization changes or being outright cut from all releases. It's quite interesting stuff, and I'm sure if you're a fan of my unreleased or definitive analysis series, you're going to love what Taylor does. NES Friend, Game Analysis and Reviews, Current Sub Count, 975. NES Friend has one show. It's called What's Up With? It's a review show covering original NES games. Solid scripting, great pacing, and the occasional nifty tidbit sprinkled in when appropriate makes for the best NES-centric show on all of YouTube. I mean, it's not even a competition. NES Friend puts on a masterclass with every video standing out in what often feels like an oversaturated and increasingly less relevant system of choice, that being the NES. It's like watching Spider-1A cover the NES. It's not that he reminds me in style so much, but more so than no nonsense to the point with a witty comment here and there approach. I honestly love these videos, so check it out because you'll love them too, unless you don't love the NES, then I'm not sure what's wrong with you. Pandemonium reviews every US Saturn game. Deep Dive Sega Saturn game reviews, current sub count 1000. While I feel the 32x Super CD Mega Drive combo is one of the greatest systems of all time, the Saturn is a solid contender in its own right, and when only considering Sega hardware, the second best console released following the Holy Trinity. It's impossible not to love the Saturn community as well, with so many passionate and kind-hearted individuals at the forefront, something not every console can claim. Pandemonium is a simple concept executed to perfection. Review every game in the Saturn library in order of US release. The intention appears to be a 246 episode run with additional miscellaneous videos dropped in here and there. His research is top notch and he's not afraid to return to a video if it means getting the details right. I personally recommend starting at the beginning or with World Series Baseball if you want something specific. There is a ton of work that goes into this series and it deserves some major love. While on the topic of the Saturn, make sure you check out the Sega Saturn Shiro podcast and website. Pandemonium is part of their team, and the website is an essential resource for anyone wanting to keep up to date with anything Saturn related, and in 2020, there is a ton of stuff happening on the system. Atari Archive, deep dive game documentaries primarily focused on the second generation. Current sub count, 1020. If there's one massive pain in the rear in our hobby, it's discussing the history behind old games. The older and more obscure the game, the harder the research challenges become. 
No one at the time ever thought someone like me would care about this stuff decades down the road. Kevin does an amazing job digging up the info and presenting his findings in a fun and informative way. Currently, the show is focused on the 2600. I want to preface this by letting you know I'm lukewarm on the 2600 and haven't played one in over three decades. But I really love this channel, and I think you will too if you give it a shot. Ray Command Technical analysis and reviews focusing on indie and homebrew releases. Current sub count 1400. I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate Ray. He has an honest, no-nonsense review style that just tells it how it is. It's a bit refreshing in a sea of tech review videos that at best often discuss topics outside of the channel's capability and at worst shill products for the sake of getting free stuff and those sweet, sweet monetized views. I'm not going to name names, but I'll say if you subscribe to Ray, you'll get an honest, educated opinion, something that's become invaluable when considering what may or may not work for you and the intentions behind the person discussing the product. Blast Processing Short Video Game Essays Current sub count 1650. Blast Processing is quite an anomaly. The presentation, production, voiceover work, and everything else that constitutes a complete video package is on par with the largest gaming channels on the platform. The videos are Sega focused, with the only hang up being his disdain for the 32X. I'll give him a pass though, because everything he's done, including his 32X tempo video, is worth watching and has been fair in its analysis. Most of his content is short, clocking in at under 5 minutes something the YouTube algorithm certainly doesn't like and is likely a contributing factor to his criminally low sub count. To be transparent, I've known about the channel for a long time, and up until about two years ago, most of the videos were under two minutes. For me, it just didn't work, though I could respect what was being done. The channel creator took a break about two years back, and when he returned, the format moved to the current five minute average, which makes a massive difference in the message being delivered. So check out that tempo video and the rest of his amazing back catalog. I have some bonus recommendations outside of these 10. First up is Brita Food for Dogs and TJ Ferreira, two channels that bring me great joy every time I watch them. I'm talking a genuine smile on my face. A small but vocal minority would like to age gate gaming related discussions, often telling creators that they're either too young or too old. I don't share these two because of their age, but that despite their age, they are dedicated to enjoying their passions and honestly make great, wholesome, and interesting videos based around what they love. Passion is ultimately what matters most, and when someone has it, it's infectious to those who consume what they choose to put into the world. I also want to recommend a couple channels that I admire, but don't quite meet the criteria for one reason or another. Rewind Mike, Wired Up Retro, and Retro Game Living Room are all personal friends of mine. None of them have large followings, but create content that shouldn't be missed. Rewind Mike's Beat 'em Ups video is a must watch, is quite frankly better than anything I've put out. Wired Up Retro and Retro Game Living Room cover very niche console and controllers typically not found on any other channel and have become an invaluable resource for those reasons. Finally, I want to recommend Super Nintendo. I've been thinking about this list for some time and he's been on it. However, as I was wrapping things up, his channel crossed the 2K mark. He's another great guy with well-produced and informative videos covering tech and games. It's quality stuff, so make sure you check him out. Hopefully, I've introduced you to some channels you've not yet heard of, and you'll hop on board as I have with your support. If you have a larger channel, I want to speak directly to you and extend an invitation. Actually, a challenge to do something similar to this. My friend Pete from On A Retro Tip and Dan from Slopes Game Room both put out similar videos at least once a year. But beyond that, there's not many other larger retro-centric channels willing to shine the light on creators who are smaller than them. Whether you're at 2,000 subs or 200,000, signal boosting smaller creators is critical to ensuring this remains a community and not a competition. With that said, thank you so much for checking out this episode, for supporting my work, and the willingness to give these other channels a shot. It really means the world to me. That's it for now, and as always, thank you for watching Virtual Impressions.